And welcome back to another episode of Creating the New Normal, Leading in a Post-Pandemic World. It is 2020. We've gone through an incredible change in our lives. And I think that, you know, most people need to realize that great things are going to come out of this. We will get through this. We absolutely will get through this. You know, my name is Ben Baker, and this is Claire Chandler. We need to sit there and look at this thing and go, okay, where are we going now? And where we left off last week was communication. And I think that the big thing we need to talk about is mission clarity. Mission clarity is huge. The problem is with companies, and this is going back as long as I can imagine, people have these lofty mission, vision, value statements that mean nothing. People go away on retreats, and I've been part of these retreats. I will admit it. I've been part of these retreats. I am reformed. And we built these mission, vision, value statements that are these pithy statements that have keywords and, you know, talk to the values of the company. And then everybody goes rah, 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 slaps themselves, you know, and, and says how wonderful they are and how wonderful we are as a group. And then they get forgotten. They get absolutely forgotten. They get posted on a wall somewhere, but they never get talked about. They never get to be part of the onboarding conversation. They're not part of the everyday conversation of how the company operates. Who are we as a company? What do we do? Why we do it? Who do we serve? What makes us valuable? Where did we come from? Where are we going? You know, what are the things that differentiate ourselves in the minds of our customers and why do they care about us? And we need to get rid of these mission, vision, value statements because nobody remembers them and create a brand story instead. Now, a brand story takes all the elements of the mission, vision, and value statement, but it turns it into a story. And as you know, as a society, you know, for 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 years, however, you know, man's been around, if not longer, we've been telling stories and we've been telling effective stories and those stories get passed on from generation to generation and they change and they evolve and the, you know, the wording changes and things happen and people add things and detract things and whatever. But the basic idea, the basic tenets of the story, the basic values of the story remain the same. And that's what we need to build within our companies. We need to, from the minute somebody is onboarded to the company until the day they leave and beyond, we need to ingrain every single employee with a brand story of the company and give them the power to re recall, retell that story, not only internally, but also to vendors, to you know, friends, to family, to customers, whatever, because when it's lived, when people have the ability to make it their own and retell it in their own way, they internalize it. And then it becomes part of their mission. And it becomes why they, they can understand why they matter to the company because they are telling the story from their own internal point of view. And it engages, like from the last conversation we had, it engages them. It allows people to be retained and grow from the company. So I wanted to get your thoughts on this, Claire. Oh, well, first of all, you're, you're tapping into a little bit of, of what enrages me um, about a lot of companies, which is exactly what you said. When you ask a company what their mission is, and the first thing they do is go, I had it, it's on which wall is it on? And they, and they equate mission with a mission statement. Yeah. And those two things in my mind could not be more different. And your use of the word story, brand story, company story, um, in place of the word mission is an important word change and emotional change because um, the, the word mission, which is at the core of what I do with my clients, has been one of the most misused words mm -hmm. in the corporate vernacular, right? Um, in that, when I work with, with businesses and business leaders, that is always, always, always where we start, is to get crystal clear on your mission. Not 
can you recite the mission statement? Um, because I because the answer is no. Well, one, Unfor the, unfortunately, the answer is no. And the the even if you can, it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. I had this conversation with a business leader not too long ago, and I asked him that very question. I said, "What's your company's mission?" And you know, his eyes went up to the top because he was trying to recall exactly word for word what the mission was on the website. And as with most of these global companies, very big, very successful, it was filled with a lot of you know highfalutin corporate words that actually were a load of crap. Yeah. And I know, like you, I had, you know, drunk the Kool-Aid back in the past and I've been part of corporate communication groups and I've been part of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, edicts to create a mission statement. Um, and so, great. So he recited it or at least got the essence of it. And I said, do your people know what the mission is? And his answer was, well, they should. And I said, well, how do you know? How do you know? And he said, well, we go out all the time and we do road shows and we repeat the mission and we repeat the vision and the values. So unless they're living under a rock, direct quote, they of course know the mission. And I said, okay, let me, if you wouldn't mind, let me play that back for you the way I heard it. You go out, yeah, you report out, yeah, you communicate out the mission statement. Yeah, I said, what are you asking for back from those people mm -hmm. to make sure they get it? And if you've ever met up with a deer on the road who gets stuck in your headlights, you know that glassy eyed stare that they get where they're not quite sure where they came from or where they're going. And that was the glassy eyed stare I got back. Because the reality is a lot of businesses are really, really good at writing mission statements or paying some glossy communications company to write it for them. And they're really good at formatting the document. Yeah, make it look pretty. Making it pretty, right? A pretty mission is not a, a, a fulfillable mission. No. If it's not embedded in your culture and is not authentic to that culture and why you exist, it is a waste of money. Mm -hmm. So your use of that word story and getting people to understand that people need to find personal attachment to a company's mission, but it's the mission in terms of their purpose. My why has to somehow be fed by your company's why. Exactly. And my role in your company has to show me how I am part of your story and how I have some power, here's that word again, to impact and move forward and make better that story. Well, the key word is internalize, because you're right. I mean, the, going back to your roadshow scenario, people go out there and they talk about things all the time. You know, they talk about this, they talk about that, about how great they are. You know, this, this is what we do. This is why we do it. This is how we do it. But they don't take the time to sit there and say, did people internalize this? Did they get it? Was it meaningful for them? And get that engagement and get that reaction and get that feedback from the people that they're trying to, you know, motivate and the people they're trying to inspire and the people they're trying to, you know, relate to. Because it's like any conversation. If it's one way, it goes in one ear and it goes out the other. You know, if somebody is just sitting there nattering at me, guess what? 90% of the time, it goes in one ear, it goes out the other. And if you ask me 15 minutes later what the person talked about, I might give you a few, you know, high points. You ask me two days later, I'd probably give you nothing. But if we're having a conversation, and if it's back and forth and you're asking questions and I'm asking questions and we're clarifying and we're able to sit there and put it in a position where everybody gets it and they're internalizing it, they can retell it and they can tell you what it means to them. That's when the magic occurs. And that's how corporations are going to move forward from this point forward is because people are going to sit there and say, you know, you said in a previous episode that your brand story can't be about COVID-19. but it has to be part of it. It has to be, we went through this together 
and this is what we learned from it. You know, it's important to not be defined by COVID-19, but you can't ignore it either. You can't just go, your life and your business can't just be about the high light reels. It has to be about the things that happened along the way that slammed you in the head, you know, beat you up, and you were able to overcome them. Because that's what people want. That's what brand stories, that's what heroes' journeys, you know, look at Lion King, for example. It's not just, you know, Simba was born, he became king, the end. It is the fact of all the trials and tribulations that went along the way that made him such a great king at, at the very end of the, of the movie. You know, and that's what keeps us engaged and that's what keeps us believing in Simba. And that's what keeps us believing in leaders is to realize that they're human beings. And they're going to make mistakes and they're going to have faults and they're going to have missteps. And it's how they acknowledge it and say, hey, listen, we went this way. We thought it was going to work out great. And guess what? It didn't. But this is what we learned from it. And this is how we were able to regroup. This is what we were able to come out of this thing. And this is how we're better because of it. And that becomes part of your brand story. That's your part of your mission, your vision, your values. It's that saying that we're not perfect. You know, it's the the day that every child realizes that their mom and dad aren't perfect. You know, that's a shattering thing. The, the sooner you can, you can teach your kids that I'm not a perfect human being and that I'm going to make mistakes and that, you know what, I'm going to work with you to try to make things better. You become a better parent. And I think it's the same thing as a leader. You know, when you can admit your faults, you can say, you know what, we made a misstep. We thought this was going to work out well. It didn't, but these are the things that we were able to salvage from this. These were the things we learned from this, and these are the things that we were able to do because of it. You know, that gives people a reason to want to be part of it, whether it's customers, whether it's employees, whether it's vendors, whoever it is. That's a story that people can believe in, and that's a story that people are going to retell. You know, and that's that's what we need to be thinking of in, in terms of our our mission. Because if we can get our employees to tell that story, you know what? You can cut your marketing budget by two thirds because they'll sit there and they'll tell their story, and your customers will tell that story, and your vendors will tell that story, and all of a sudden, you got people flocking to you without paid advertising. Absolutely. And, and you, you are 100% right. Your employees are your best brand ambassadors, your best advocates for your story. And I love that you brought up Simba, um, not just because it's a, it's a great movie and an even better musical, um, but that Simba, the reason we loved him was because he was a flawed leader. Yeah. And, you know, that, that type of leader is who we truly follow is not the one who pretends that he's a superhero or she has all the answers. It's the one who can admit that they don't know all the answers and therefore that's why they've surrounded themselves with people like you and I, right? Who can help them get to the right solution um, if we are properly empowered, right? And so this, this concept, you know, I, I, if we think back to the first time as children, we ever ran into one of our teachers in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Or um, I can remember one time, you know, my, my physician when I was a child, um, never saw him in real life, but saw the nurse that always accompanied him, that actually always did the vaccines, right? And saw her in a restaurant once. And when you're a child and the first time you see one of these um, authority figures, mm -hmm out in the real world, walking the same streets you do, it isn't until that moment that you realize that they are human as well, that they Absolutely. must be out of food from time to time, right? And they need a dozen eggs, um, you know, and, and all of that. So, and we, we start to see them not as this um, character with a role to play, but they're an actual human who plays a role in our lives and, and vice versa. And, you know, the, this notion of we all have a contribution to the story brings up for me this concept of impact. Mm -hmm. um, you know, impact should inform everyone's brand story as a company. Right? True. 
what is our why? And the why is not the, the widgets that we produce, it's the impact that it has on the customer, the client, the community, the society that we serve, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, you know, knowing that and, and understanding that as a leader, we also have to understand what is our impact? Mm -hmm. You know, they say that the, the number one effect on uh, or, or driver of employee engagement is not my association with my individual job. It's my relationship with my direct manager, yeah. right? That is the biggest driver of engagement. And too many companies, and in, you know, the, the larger ones especially kind of fall victim to this, um, accept the fact or the reality that there's a wide variation in the ability of a manager to engage their people. And we shouldn't stand for that because yeah. everyone has it in them to empower and engage and accelerate the performance and the potential of the people that report to them. And the way that you do that is through that power of why, right? It's why we are in a position to lead in the first place. And it's why we are in a business that we are in that should inform the mission and should be the absolute central plot of that brand story. And, and I agree. And, and the, my big challenge is, is the Peter principle mm. is that unfortunately too many companies, a lot of companies don't invest in their people. You know, I'm a big believer of people first purpose and then profit, you know, and purpose is your why it's, it's what, you know, why do you do what you do? And I think that that's really important, but the problem is we're not investing in our people. We have too many managers, directors, vice presidents, senior vice presidents, whatever, that we just promote. We just promote people because of the amount of time they've been in a company. And we don't give them the mentoring, the coaching, the training that they need, the soft skills that they need to be able to, you know, survive and thrive in the position. I mean, that's why we created our course is, you know, how, how to retain employees through leadership. And it's all about the, you know, the soft skills, the human skills of being a leader that most people just never learn. You know, they're just never taught because companies don't invest in their people and they don't give them the ability to succeed. So you have people that have done a job and now they're in a management position and they don't know how to lead because it's, it's completely different from doing the job to leading the people that were, are doing the job. It's a different skill set. It's a different mentality. It's a different communication that needs to happen. And I think that that's really important for all of us to be thinking about that you know, moving forward, do we have the right people in place leading our people that are able to provide that mission, vision, values, that brand story that, you know, that in, be able to inspire our people to be the best and be able to get them to understand what the true purpose of the company is. Because if we don't, you know, we're not going to survive and thrive through this. And we're not long-term because, you know, management through authority, the stick, stare, carrot and stick management is gone. Right. You know, there is a new paradigm and it's all about understanding the people that you work with and inspiring them to be the best. Every leader, and I don't care if you're a frontline manager who manages five people to a senior vice president or a C-suite needs to wake up every single morning and say, how can I help my people be better? What can I do to make things better for them? And I think that that's, that's a great place to, to end this because we need to be thinking about that. And we need to be thinking about that as, as leaders at all levels. How do we wake up every single morning and help our teams be better? Because if we don't, we're in trouble. Now, this is Ben Baker, Claire Chandler. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Creating the New Normal, Leading in a Post-Pandemic World. We're going to come to you every single week with a new episode. And on the last week of every month, we're going to open this up to a Q&A. So thanks for being part of this. You guys have a great day.